major AL hunt for October entering Monday. In the East, the Yankees holding a six-game edge on the Red Sox. In the Central, Twins in the driver's seat of five and a half on the White Sox and Royals. Out West, the A's by four over the M's. And in the wild card, Boston owning a two and a half game lead on Seattle. And the Yankees with a four and a half game lead over the A's for home field. Red Sox hosting Baltimore. Johnny Damon on first. Sox up three nothing. Manny Ramirez swings and misses. Damon stealing second without a throw, but heads back to first because he thought it was foul tipped. That's not good. Bad base running by Damon ends the inning. He knows it. So Ramirez leads off the fourth. Would that be good for Boston in the long run? Ramirez. He's got the magic stick, number 36 off of Jason Johnson. 4-1, Boston. Trot, Nixon, and David Ortiz also homered for the Red Sox. Sox go to the pen in the seventh. How do you feel about that, Grady Little? Honestly, the truth. Hey, I kind of put myself in the frame of mind like we do on an airplane when we're getting ready to take off, and they say, buckle your seatbelt. And, and uh, there might be a little turbulence. All right, we've buckled our seatbelts, ready for the turbulence. First batter, Jack Cuss, taking Jones deep. He's fourth. Sox bullpen looking shaky. O's down by three. Sox up now, 7-5, top nine. BK Kim looking for his second straight save. And what do you know? He ends the game. A perfect nine. 16 saves and 19 chances as the Sox hang on. All right, what about the Mariners? Can they... Keep charging. Jamie Moore trying to become the first Mariner to have two 20-win seasons now. Other 40-year-old 20-game winners include some pretty impressive company. Phil Necro, Warren Spahn, Rover Alexander, and the man himself, Cy Young. Bottom of the second, Sean Wooten facing Moyer, and Jamie pulls the string. Three strikeouts for Moyer in the game. Mariner's up a deuce, and Moyer gets some help from his friends. Brett Boone, gone. Boone, three for four in the game, and uh, that gives Seattle a three-zip cushion, and that was more than enough for Moyer. He was on his game. Bottom of the third, how about a little defense? The little bunt that turns into a pop-out. Dan Wilson uh, to second for the double play. Top of the fifth, one on for Randy Wynn. Three-nothing Mariners in win. Hits one deep to center. Sean Figgins melts. Melt. Win meanwhile's rolling. Edgar Martinez scores. Where's Win? I don't know. Coming. Coming. He's on his horse. Three for five on the evening, and he has an inside the park homer. Jamie Moyer. That's just popped up. He scatters six hits over nine and gets number 20. Congratulations, old guy. See? Old guy's doing his thing. Jamie Moore gets his 20th, and the Mariners, though, more importantly, still in the hunt. Just two and a half back behind the Red Sox in the wild card. Mariners with five games remaining to pick up those two and a half games. Red Sox magic number to clinch the wild card four, and it could be tough. There's three in the West. Rangers in town. Miguel Tejada on third. Ramon Hernandez flies to left. Shane Spencer will catch it. Now Tejada tags up the throw from Spencer once he grabs it. Tejada racing and he is out at the plate but he is angry about something and pointing to the outfield now watch this alex rodriguez and this is just crafty by a rod watch this blocked tahada's view so he couldn't see when spencer caught the ball that's just a rod being smart and nothing you can do about it you know barry zito on the hill and zito has never lost to the Rangers, 10-0 lifetime. He is one of four active pitchers in baseball with at least nine wins and no losses versus one team. Pedro Martinez, 12-0 over his career against Seattle. Uh, Randy Johnson, 11-0 versus the Cubs. Jose Lima, 9-0 against Milwaukee. Top of the fourth, Zito flowing. Hits A-Rod back, strikes him out four Ks in six innings. Top of the sixth, top 10 nominee. Watch Mark Ellis living deliciously. Zito appreciates the defense and improves with the win, 7-3. And uh, in the Central, the Astros began the day clinging to a half-game lead over the Cubs. Meanwhile, the wild card was a half-game for the Marlins over the uh, Phillies in Atlanta. Well, the home field fight with the Giants. It's a one-game cushion. All right, so we start with the Giants and the Astros and pick things up in the third, 2-1. Barry Bonds on deck. 
One out, Ron Vallone walks Rich Aurelia. So the bases are loaded for Barry Bonds. That usually means Roro time. So Bert, Bert Hooten walks to the mound to talk to Vallone. Jordan Williams wants the Astros to talk things over. So we ask, what are the Astros discussing? Do they intentionally walk Bonds, pitch around Bonds, go right at Bonds, uh, or getting a good deal on car insurance? Well, they go right at him. The shift is on, and... They turn two, so the Astros with the double play. Bonds 0 for 4, easy money there. Bottom of the fourth, tied at two, runner on third, Brad Osmus, the squeeze bunt. Richard Hodago scores a manufactured run, 3-2 Astros. Top of the seventh, Octavio Dotel in a jam. Base is loaded, he walks Ray Durham, forcing in a run. Dotel, an inning and a third, two walks, two strikeouts, we're tied at three. Top of the ninth, Billy Wagner in. He had not given up a run. Since August 22nd, that's two of them at once, as Pedro Feliz smokes a two-run shot, 5-3 Giants. Next batter, Ray Durham, same flavor. My, my, my. Wagner gives up back-to-back -back home runs for the first time since September 21st of 96. Costly, costly loss for the Astros, 6-3 in your final as the Giants win. So what does it all mean? Well, it means now the Astros and Cubs are in a dead heat. The Astros, meanwhile, have two more against San Francisco. Then they take on the Brewers, the Cubs. They've got Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, so obviously they have the easier schedule. This could be tasty down the stretch. Dodgers wild card hopes on the line in San Diego against Bruce Bochy and his Padres. Hey, second baseman Mark Loretta had something to say about his team. His quote, I've had a lot of people say this, is the best last place team they've ever seen. It's kind of an oxymoron, but I think it's true. This out of Mark Loretta. Bottom one, Padres up one nothing, two men on, nobody out, Phil Nevin, he's been lifting. Nevin, two for four, three RBI, he's 13th of the year. Listen, if the Dodgers are so desperate, why are they losing to the Padres for nothing, Kevin? Top of I don't the know fifth. What's wrong with the Hollywood I'm saying it. Dodgers down 7 3. Cesar Ister is at first, two out. Paul LaDuca, he's trying. Ramon Vasquez snags it, ends the Dodgers' threat, and basically, virtually, possibly, ends their season. All right, the Marlins trying to salvage a split with Atlanta. They would love to have a full game lead over the Phillies going into that pivotal, pivotal series on the way. You know, the first three games of this series, the Marlins won two and three hitters, four for 36. But this season against Mike Hampton, Luis Castillo, Juan Pierre, and Pudge Rodriguez batting 484, top of the first. Castillo, a leadoff walk. Pierre with the sacrifice bunt. Mark Giles late covering first, ruled a single. Next batter, Pudge, playing unselfishly, bunts it up in the air. Hampton in disciples of everybody safe. Castillo and Pierre would score to make it 3 0. Top of the second, 3 0. More Marlins, 1, 2, and 3 hitters. They, Castillo lines the single. Next batter, Pierre lays down the perfect bunt. No play. Another bunt single. Amazing. That's when you know what you're doing. That's scouting. Later in the inning, full count, two outs. Derek Lee, and uh, he didn't bunt that. That's a bang, bang, a big in. His 31st of the year, 6 nothing Marlins. We're just two innings into this party. Bomb of the ninth, and Mr. Mr. Jones. Well, Chipper drives it deep to center, but Pierre says, I don't think so. Premature celebration in Atlanta. Huge win for the Marlins as they take this one 6-3. Why is it a big win? Well, the Marlins with a full one-game lead over the Phillies on the eve of their three-game series in Florida. Cubs and Astros are tied in the Central, and both are two games back in the National League wild card. Next three days could be very interesting. Straight American League East crown, that's Alfonso Soriano. Hey, who holds the record for most leadoff home runs in one season? Ricky Henderson, Brady Anderson, or Soriano? Top of the first, no score. Soriano facing Bartolo Colon, first batter of the game. That means this is a leadoff home run. His 13th leadoff home run of the season. It's a top 10 nominee, and it is also a record. Yankees up 1-0. Soriano's 35th of the year. Top of the third, same flavor as Soriano. Does it again. Another home alone shot. His second multi-homer game in a week. His sixth multi-homer game of his career. 2-0 Yankees on his 36th. Top of the ninth. Game tied at three. Faces Jack for Derek Jeter. Facing Tom Gordon. Gordon, Jeter. Check yourself. He can't. He's done. Threat over for the inning. Top of the 10.
Still tied at three. Two on, two out for Aaron Boone and Gordon flowing. Two strikeouts in an inning and a third. Another threat gone. Bottom of the tenth, Jeff Weaver to Maglia Ordonez and get gone. There's life on the south side. White Sox still in the mix. They keep it hope alive. Walk off home run for Mags, his first ever 6 3 the final. Not much hope for the Tigers facing the Royals. Yeah, Alan Trammell's Tigers looking to avoid history. Yes, avoid it. With a loss Monday night, Detroit could break an AL record for losses in a season, surpassing the 1916 A's with 118 defeats. But they still trail the 62 Mets for the major league record. Bottom four, Royals up 3 to 1. Man on second, Brent Main. Right through the legs of second baseman Warren Morris. Rondell White scores. The Royals go up 4 to 1 on the error by Morris. Bottom eight, Royals up 11, 6 2. One. Desi Relaford pops it up. Morris is under it, but this is just flat out ugly. Yeah, the Tigers do it. They set a new AL record for losses with 118. But the good news is for the Royals. They clinched their first winning season since 94. Now, with their victories, the White Sox and Royals moved to within five games of the Twins in the AL Central race, if you call it a race, because the Twins' magic number is just two. Holiday going for win number 22. Jays hosting the D-Rays. Both benches warned early about pinching inside and hitting batters. Halliday, what does he do? Throws some heat inside of Rocco Baldelli. Next pitch, jamming Baldelli. Halliday with a 0.24 ERA in September, but pitching inside. Two batters later, he hits Damian Rolls. Inside pitch. Top of the six, no score Julio Lugo. No doubt. Number 12. Before that homer, Halliday had not allowed an earned run in a club record 41 innings. Two batters later, Halliday hitting Baldelli, and he gets thrown out. So much for win number 22. Here's what they both had to say about what happened. He was pitching well, and he came in on me, uh, you know, inside the at-bat before that. So that was probably part of his game plan anyways. And, uh, I mean, that one I guess he just missed on. I don't understand it. And, uh... You know, especially in that situation. Um, you know, but like I said, there's there's not a whole lot we can do now. Two hit batters by Halliday, his first loss since August 27th. Rob Bell held Toronto hitless for six innings. What does 18 years of loyal service get you these days in the major leagues? Well, in Barry Larkin's case, a slap in the face. According to a source close to the negotiations, acting general manager John Allen offered the future Hall of Famer, who will become a free agent after the season, a $500,000 deal with incentives and told Larkin that there would be no negotiations. Larkin had hoped to play one more season and finish his career with the Reds. It's been a great ride here. The, you know, the fans have been wonderful. You know, the support um, in the city has been incredible. Um, and I surely did not want my last game to be a month ago or however long ago in Houston. Barry Larkin grew up in Cincinnati and like Cal Ripken in Baltimore has never played anywhere else except his hometown even though he had chances to go elsewhere. According to our sources, John Allen didn't want to sign Larkin three years ago, and it was owner Carl Lindner who stepped in and re-signed the team's captain.